All right, man, peace. So, brothers, this is going to be volume one in a new series that I'm starting called Know Who Matters. And this edition is going to be featuring the former safety of the Cleveland Browns, Mr. Jermaine Whitehead. And the reason why I wanted to cover this topic is because it's extremely important in my view that we all understand as so-called black men that there are so many forces around us that are trying to bring forth negative energy and force it upon us that we have to grasp that we only have a finite amount of energy while we dwell in this three-dimensional plane of existence. That means that we have to understand who to expend our energy on and who to allow an energy exchange with. That's why a lot of my videos cover who it is that we should take seriously as opposed to who it is that we should discard. Because a lot of people that we encounter in life really don't matter much in the grand scheme of things. There are people that we're going to come upon that we have to take seriously whether it be in the workplace or in relationships, family, friends, etc. And there are people that we're going to have to deal with with a certain level of frivolity because that's their only purpose for being in our life. Unfortunately, there are so many people who don't know why they're here on the earth, so they decide that they're going to lead with a sense of provocation or by just being an agent of chaos because they're envious at another person for being able to exalt themselves by capitalizing on their gifts and their talents. That's truly what envy is. Envy is spending more time worried about how hard someone is working to cultivate their gifts rather than how hard you should be working to cultivate your own gifts. And that's the problem with Mr. Jermaine Whitehead. He did not understand that what the social media world is, is a bastion of envy and inadequacy. It's a place where people go to act as if they're more important than they actually are. There's a series of subcultures that dwell on social media that help people become even more dysfunctional and they don't quite understand that. So that's why I have no idea why he decided to go back and forth with quote unquote fans who are just people who are mentally unstable. That's really what a fan is. That's why I state to brothers, do not be a fan. It's one thing to admire someone for the gifts that they have and to give them due credit and just do for the hard work that they have utilized to bring those gifts to the forefront. But to be a fan of someone is to be an idolater. And there's a very thin line, as they say, between love and hate. There's also a very thin line between a fan and a hater. And Jermaine Whitehead did not understand any of those things. And now he has partially destroyed his own career because he seemed to be a marginal safety at best, but at least he had a job in the NFL. Now he's going to be known as someone who's mentally unstable. I'm sure that he's going to get a chance somewhere else, but you never know. He might not get another opportunity for the rest of the season. Now, hopefully for the brother, maybe another team will pick him up and he could be a nickel defensive back somewhere, maybe even be on a playoff team. But as of right now, cats really have to understand, not just on social media, but also interpersonally. We have to be very careful with what we say, who we say it to, and how much we allow others to affect our emotional state, especially when they don't fucking matter. There are so many people that we encounter in life that we give so much power over to because, unfortunately... Many of us want to be validated by other people. And that's much of what social media is about, validation. That's why they have the concept known as likes. You're supposed to be searching for likes because that means that you're of greater value because people quote unquote like you. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Back to TNG Sports. I'm Evan along with Michael J. Babcock and Shark. Baby Shark hated Robert Littell. They're all trash. You're trash. That's yeah, all right. great. Anyway, all right, let's move on to uh, this is a crazy situation involving the Cleveland Browns. Talk about trash. The Cleveland Browns are a trash football team right now. <laughs> they look terrible. Baker Mayfield looks okay, worse. Baker, that he'll walk out on you. Baker Mayfield, uh, everyone's talking about that four down play at the end of the game. Where Let me say this about Baker Mayfield. He's someone to watch very closely over the course of the next year or so. Because he acts as if he has it all buttoned up and put together on the football field. He's so competitive and he knows what he's supposed to do out there. It's very clear when you watch him play that he is very lost. And this jump that he's had to sustain from the college football world to the NFL has been very difficult for him to adjust to. He had a very good rookie season last year, especially down the stretch of the season. But what these teams do is they adjust. They watch what you like to do. And now you have to make another adjustment. That's what all great players do. They have an unlimited amount of counters, whether it's in baseball, basketball, or football. What sets the greats apart from just good players or regular players is their ability to come up with an endless amount of counters. Whether it's Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather. What they're all known for is their ability to counterattack their opponent when the opponent attempts to take away 
what they customarily like to do first. Baker Mayfield seems to be very limited, and he's also showing signs of psychologically cracking. Whenever I see someone who's as obsessed about his facial hair as Baker Mayfield seems to be, it seems like almost every couple of days he has a new mustache, a new beard. He's trying to hide the fact that he does not like what he sees when he looks in the mirror. Throw the ball to Odell Beckham and say he tried to throw it in double coverage to Jarvis Landry. This play right here, he throws it in double coverage instead of throwing it to Odell Beckham. The crazy. And look for the Cleveland Browns to possibly try to trade Odell Beckham after this season or look for Odell to demand a trade. Odell's dream is to be traded to the New England Patriots. They were trying to get that deal done last year when he was on the Giants, but the Giants refused to send him to the Patriots because they knew what would happen. That's why Odell seems to be so obsessed with Tom Brady. And on top of that, Brady is his master in the craft. When Odell tried to hand him those quote-unquote goat-haired shoes, that was an allusion to Pan or the Baphomet. Odell is an apprentice in the craft. He understands that Brady is an extremely high-ranking Luciferian. I've already done a video about this. Brady has already come out and admitted that he practices witchcraft to win games. So that's why Odell went through that big ritual with Tom Brady to hand him the quote unquote goat haired shoes. I don't think a lot of people pointed this out. He actually checked off of Odell Beckham. He looks at Odell Beckham and decides, nope, and tries to force it into Jarvis. Odell Beckham, who, who, as you see there, had his guy beat. Yeah. Had him beat easy. Unbelievable. After the game, though, the story transitioned from how terrible Baker's doing this season to a guy named Jermaine Whitehead, who's a safety for the Browns. Uh, he was still in the team locker room when this happened, okay? He was. He went on social media, he went on Twitter, saw that people were talking trash to him about how terrible of a game they played. He and got ran over by a tight end. Yeah, and they were trash. Look, I understand to a degree why a lot of athletes like to be on social media. It allows them many more avenues to meet women. That's for the most part the main reason why so many athletes are on social media. But at the end of the day, there are going to be so many ways that you're going to be able to come across these hoes, man. <laughs> you don't need to run to your phone right after the game to find out what people are saying about you. Many times you know when you've had a bad game. That's even more reason to stay off your phone and off the social media when you know that you've been ran over by a tight end, when you've blown the coverage, things like that. You know for a fact that people are going to be trying to give you a hard time. Stay off of Twitter, stay off of Facebook, stay off of Snapchat, stay off of Instagram. There's nothing good that people are going to have to say to you there. They run over by a tight end, and he started clapping. And that's just a microcosm. As I stated in my intro for the video, the so-called black man is just way too infatuated with what people think about him and what they're saying about him. And that makes us very easy to manipulate people on Twitter. Watch, watch this play. Great right. play. Yeah. Woo. No <laughs> effort to make that time. By the way, that's no offense. That guy is a beast. All right. But anyway, here's what... Here's what here's a poor effort to, to make true. that time. Here's what Jermaine Whitehead told people on Twitter who were giving him a hard time. Number one, I'm going to kill you. That's on blood. On blood. Number two, don't get shot at, little bitch. Can you whip my ass? Bleep football. Let me know when you need the address. And then he actually gave out the address <laughs> to the Cleveland Brown's facility and invited a guy who he calls a cracker which is uh you know that's not a compliment that is a that is that's another issue that a lot of so-called black men have once again i'm just getting my perspective on my channel i always state i don't tolerate the gender war bullshit and i also don't tolerate the circular race talk i have no idea why so-called black men are infatuated with going back and forth with the caucasian on social media or in the comment section of many of these websites etc why do you give a fuck about what the so-called white man has to say about you? 99.9% .9 of these Caucasian football fans wish that they could be like the film Get Out and put their brain inside of a black football athlete's body so that they could live out their dream. <laughs> That's really what they wish. So just you going back and forth with them is allowing them to finally feel like they've made the team. Just ignore them. Treat them like a woman. If you want to hurt a woman's feelings, Cut her off and just ignore her. It's the same thing with these fans because they have the spirit of women. Bad word. That is a, a racial slur for white people. He gave the, the address to the Cleveland Browns facility and invited the guy to come up to Berea, Ohio to come fight him in front of the Browns management and all that stuff. So apparently that was enough for the Cleveland Browns. And they said, you know what? I think it's time we go our separate ways. And they cut his ass. So now Jermaine Whitehead is, uh, is unemployed. Listen, anytime you say on blood, you know you're serious. He wanted to fight, right?
No, he was just serious at that moment. That's all. You don't say on blood unless you're ready to throw that a, that's a There are a lot of people who are in prison right now because they were extremely serious about the life threat that they put on a person at that moment and they were forced to carry it out. And now they're in some prison facility somewhere doing 25 years, 35 years, or life saying to themselves, damn, I wish I would have just ignored that damn fool. Gang term Not necessarily. It's just kind of a way to say on oh God or you know like you know how uh, Adrian Broner says on oh God and them? Yeah. That's kind of like to say. That's another nut job, Adrian Broner. Necessarily a, right. a gang term. So you don't have to be in no, the blood to say to on blood. It's just saying, hey, I'm really serious. Like you say, that's on my mama or on my grandma. Got it. Got he's it. just real serious about what he's saying. Well, on blood, he's on... I don't understand how these people, they listen to so much hip hop, watch so many sporting events where they listen to black athletes talk and they constantly need a quote unquote token black guy to decipher, <laughs> to decipher a lot of the slang and the lingo that black people use on the internet or on social media. And he on blood, he's probably not going to get hired again. He's not good enough to get to say that stuff and to get rehired. No, not here's the enough. thing: if this was Baker Mayfield, did right, does Baker right. Mayfield still have a job? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Even if it's Odell Beckham or, or John oh, yeah. Landry, yeah, uh, you know, but they're not that dumb. To right, they just that. Even Odell would probably get suspended, though. If Odell had said some of the things that Jermaine White had said on his social media page, they would have had to suspend Odell for at least two or three games. You're not gonna get you. Yeah, he apologized. He said, I apologize for my performance, but having a broke hand and a strong fear of letting my team down is my downfall. I well, that's understandable, but since you're in that emotional state where you're extremely insecure about your injuries, that's all the more reason why you should stay off the internet and off of social media. 90% of the people on social media are complete idiots, and another 7 to 8% are partial idiots. There's only about 1 to 2% of people on social media that have any real sense at all. That's going to be the end of volume one of Know Who Matters. Of course, this is going to be an ongoing series. It is what it is. But brothers, once we focus on what's important and have tunnel vision on who's important, it becomes far easier to ignore the people who don't matter phase out the unnecessary chatter the so-called black man should be focused on finding a way to truly isolate himself so that he can get to a higher level of comprehension and understanding anyway especially in this captivity brothers need to leave these corporate jobs if they can work on building up their own name their own brand their own business whatever it is so that you can capitalize on what you do and do it well not going back and forth with people on social media or in the comment section or in person that could lead to your incarceration, that could lead to the end of your life. And it's not worth all that. But anyway, peace.